Next up we've got Brendan who's uh, from our wonderful drink sponsors, Sign Up To, and he's speaking about uh, online marketing, email marketing. I'll hand it over to you. Thanks Bruce. Hello everyone, I'm uh, Brendan. I work for uh, Sign Up To, an email marketing company. Um, I'm going to try and give you some advice. Um, may not relate to all of you, but um, Email marketing is sort of around the fringes of websites. A lot of companies do it. Um, so hopefully there's something in it for you all. Um, I've got questions at the end of each section. Um, I don't know if we've got time, but I might just skip through to those and we'll do questions at the end. Uh, so transform your email marketing in 30 minutes or less. Um, a couple of different sections we're going to talk about. Subject lines, um, how to get your emails opened. Split testing, why, when and how, um, open rates, how does it compare, and other mediums, are you missing out? Uh, so is email still relevant? Um, this graph shows <laughs> uh, so. Uh, email, uh, SMS is still massive, uh, it's, it's on all the phones, but email you're looking at uh, 660 billion. Um, Sorry, 277 billion, um, which is which is still quite a, a, a lot more than the uh, the 900 million for Facebook. Um, the marketing cycle. This is something that we use at Sign Up Two. Um, it's sort of a basis for our our company and, and how we run things. Um, it steps through the different processes. You've got collect, create, send, share, and analyze. It's the, the different sections within our account. Um, whether you use a different ESP, email service provider, they may do things differently, but that's sort of the, the flow that we're going to go through. Um, so, subject lines, how to get your emails opened. Um, this is probably the most important copy you'll write um, as it influences clicks as well as opens. Um, if, if nobody opens your email, um, then nothing else really matters. Uh, so, a couple of uh, points. Uh, avoid, avoid using exclamation marks and percentages. Um, these are sort of red flags for spam filters. Um, a lot of people like to end their subject line with four or five exclamation marks. It's not a good idea. Um, there are other hot words, um, free, money off. Um, there, there are a ton of other ones which are, are fairly obvious. Um, Viagra, Rolex watches, uh, university degrees, um, these all are quite common associated with spam. I think if that is your business, um, then you're already going to have a tough time anyway. Um, lengthy subject lines, this is something that uh, people get wrong all the time. They like to write big paragraphs as a subject line. Um, it's a bad idea. You need to get the point across really quickly in a short amount of characters, um, prefer preferably 60 characters or less. Um, not only will this not annoy the people you're sending your emails to, but if it's a particular web-based email client, it's more than likely going to get trimmed off anyway. Um, so if the main point of your subject line is in the second or third sentence, they're not going to see it. Um, call to actions. This is particularly important. Um, the example we've got here, 24 hours left to take advantage of our special offer. Um, it's quite good. You're, you're telling people that you've got a special offer and they need to act now. Um, you, know, you, you can base around that tone. Obviously, um, remembering to be honest, if you don't have a special offer or it's valid for another week, um, you're only going to annoy people, which generally results in unsubscribes. Um, tone is the next one. Keep in line with your brand. Um, if you're a friendly, relaxed company, um, you, should, you should maintain that tone with your subject lines. Um, you know, if you're a corporate lawyer, maybe you, you, you probably shouldn't use the same tone. Um, and mentioning current affairs, this is a big one. Um, upcoming public holidays, the weather, or even um, something as simple as the day of the week works really well. A couple of examples here. Um, we see we talk about uh, Celebrate Australia Day in style with our new range. You're mentioning the, the public holiday that's coming up. This can be anything. Um, the weather, maybe it's raining outside, but it's warm and toasty in our store. This works quite well for cafes or restaurants. Um, you're really appealing to people on miserable raining days. 
Um, and the other three, um, you know, as corny as they sound, uh, our two for one will cure your Monday-itis, or hump day, you're halfway there, book your tickets for the weekend, or um, thank God it's Friday, you've done it, celebrate with us this afternoon. They actually really work. You're appealing to um, people's working weeks and how they might be feeling. Um, if you can get those strings drawn, um, yeah, it, it results in opens and clicks and ultimately customers. Um, Personalisation, um, you can go one step further and put in some first names. Um, this, does, this does work. Uh, people can sometimes be quite cynical about it. Um, it it's, it's quite a high indicator that you're on a bulk list if, if someone's putting your name in the, in the subject line. Um, but at the end of the day, it does stop people. You know, if you see your name, you stop, you take notice. If it happens to be from a company that you recognise or a mailing list that you know you're on, um, it might just be that little half-second attention-grabbing um, point that gets your email open and the rest. Um, again, remember, be honest. You don't want to call them out, tell them there's a special offer, and then not actually have one. Um, people will unsubscribe. Um, so we'll skip questions, move on. Uh, split testing, why, when and how. Um, it's good to just test one hypothesis each time. Um, you can try just the subject line, variants on that. You can work on an intro paragraph, in the email itself, um, or perhaps a couple of call to actions, whether they're placed in different spots, whether they're different colours, whether they use different tone. Um, test as often as you can. Um, Testing can be time consuming, um, but you get so much out of it. Uh, the more you test, the more you know about your database, the more, the more you know about your customers, whether you're sending them the right emails. Um, test, test, test. Um, and allow enough time to gather results. Um, I'm going to recommend three hours. Um, you know, it, it obviously depends on your database and, and your time frame. But, um, the more time you have to gather the results in, the better your data is going to be, and the more accurate the, the, the winning result is going to end up being. Um, so here we've got some, uh, some subject lines. Um, you want to make sure that the emails are being open for anything else. We mentioned that. Um, the same subject matter, phrased differently. So here we're talking about this two-for-one offer again. Um, We've got three different points for the example. Um, a direct approach, latest offer, two for one on all items. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, something creative. Uh, we can talk about the days of the week, um, Monday artists and all. Uh, and then again, something personalized, putting the first name in there. Uh, we're still talking about the same point, but we're taking three different approaches. And um, our test will let us know what the majority of our database feels about that. Um, Depending on your ESP or your email service provider, they may have means for you to do your split testing. Otherwise, you'll have to do it manually. This is a basic flow of what you want to do. Um, create your different test cases. Um, so this, for this example, it'll be the three different subject lines. Um, select a testing percentage or a list. Uh, okay, that'll be, we're going to test 10% of our entire database and send the, the winner out to the, to the remaining 90%. This may also be a test list that you have and then you send the winning um, campaign to the remaining list. Um, what you're actually going to test, whether it's going to be opens or clicks, uh, subject lines, obviously you're only testing for opens here and that's generally where you want to start and then clicks once they're, once they're in the email, testing what type of content um, works the most to get the people uh, to click. Um, testing period, we mentioned um, how long that's going to be, how long you're going to let that test sit for and let people have the chance to, to react to it. Um, collect the results and then send out the winner. And again, that'll be either to the remaining percentage of the list that hasn't been sent the test um, or, a, or, or a different list. Um, if you can see that, that's a basic flow. In sign up, we have this automated, so you can, you can split test. I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, again, so you've got your three different campaigns there, um, A, B, and C. We can add more if we like, um, but in this example, we've got the, the three subject lines from, from earlier. Um, then we go on and uh, pick the percentage 
of the, the list that we're going to test. Um, here we've set 10%, and so that's going to be 10% for each list. So we're looking at a 30% test just in this example. Um, and then down the bottom, we've got a, a drop box for whether we're, um, we're testing the open rate or the click rate. Um, what should we do after the test? Um, so here, as I recommended, three hours. Um, what we're going to do is automatically send the winning campaign to the remaining list. Um, in sign up, you have the option to, to just gather the results as well. Um, calling the test is just a label, um, and then running the test. Um, whether we're going to schedule that at a particular time, start early in the day, or whether we just kick it off straight away. Um, so that one run, and then after the, the three hours, we get our results back. Um, and this is just a, a screen grab from one of the test accounts, and you can see that campaign B was the winner, only just slightly, uh, with, with 9%. So automatically after three hours, um, subject B was the winner, and the remaining 70% of the database went off to um, with, with subject line B. Uh, it's, it's a really quick and easy way to determine um, in, in this example, people liked having their first name in the subject line. It was enough to grab their attention um, for them to, to carry on and open the email. Um, nobody really does this, and they should. Um, the tools are there. Most ESPs provide it. Um, it does take a little bit longer, but you find out lots of valuable information. Uh, you don't want to be wasting your time day in, day out, or, or week in, week out, sending emails that people just aren't opening. Um, so now that we know how to get the emails open, how do we get them to take action? So now we switch to click rate testing. Um, you can test different introduction paragraphs. Um, again, the different call to actions, like I mentioned before, the styles or the locations of those call to actions. Um, and you could also do um, links as images as opposed to text links. That's another, another good test to have, whether you just have intro, uh, paragraphs of text with links in there or you put in your call to action buttons everywhere. Um, here are a few different examples um, of the same content just laid out differently. Um, so this is, this is quite a good click test um, where you can see do people just want to have the paragraphs there? Do they perhaps want a, a, a mix between some images and uh, some text? Uh, maybe a sidebar helps. Um, it, it's, it's not always easy to have different layouts, but depending on the software you use and the templates that are available or the templates that you have, um, take advantage of it if you can. Mixing it up sometimes and testing the results um, can be quite surprising. Um, so now, open rates. How does it compare? Um, just for this example, we're going to group them all in as, as open rates. Um, but what we're actually talking about are opens, clicks, and unsubscribes. Um, opens, quite obvious, is what we've been talking about before. Uh, it's whenever your email is opened. Uh, this is actually checked by uh, when the images are loaded or, and, in other cases, when a, a link is actually clicked from within that email. Um, we assume that the, uh, for the link to be clicked, the email had to be open, um, so that, that counts as an open. A bit of a disclaimer on that is um, obviously not all images are loaded. By default, email clients block images. This is something that happened quite a few years ago from all the obscene spam that was coming through. Everybody blocks by default. But um, you know, if you're sending to a list regularly, you're going to be on a safe sender list or a not spam list. They're going to recognize it. Um, or if you're using an iPhone or, or other device, they're loaded by default. Um, it's a yardstick, and, and everybody uses that same, the same measurement. So it, it's a pretty, pretty good indicator. Uh, clicks. Again, these can be total or unique. Um, normally, in averages, you're looking at total clicks. Um, but when you break it down, um, most ESPs record the totals and the unique clicks, as well as giving you information about who clicked on what. Um, and the one nobody likes is unsubscribes, um, when someone's had enough and they want out. Um, so this is a screen grab from sign up of a campaign. Um, you can see it was sent out to a particular number, and then the percentage of opens, uh, clicks, and unsubscribes follow on. Um, these are the general stats you're going to get from each of your emails. Um, it'll find out what that particular one was. It'll give you an idea um, to compare 
one campaign against another campaign, um, and hopefully your ESP will give you the, the different um, stats to break that down, find out who's clicking on what, um, and roll in the social media, web views, and, and whatnot. Um, so some other stats we have are account averages. Um, these are the combined totals of all your campaigns, um, and also industry averages. Um, not all ESPs do that, but in sign up, when you create an account, we ask you for your industry, and then we collate those uh, stats anonymously, and then present them in all the other accounts that list the same industry. So quite often, well, always, you will see your account averages next to um, industry averages. It's, it's another good yardstick. Uh, different industries have varying open rates. Um, so if you were to just combine averages, it doesn't actually translate. Um, government has very different to ITC, which again has you know, very different to restaurant and bars. Um, the big one is annual average open rates. Now, um, each ESP will have their own because they collect data for the year across all their accounts. Um, so for us, for this year, um, or, or sorry, the last, you're looking at 18.35 uh, for the open rates, uh, 2.95 for the click rates, and 0 0.15 for the unsubscribe. Um, a lot of people are surprised when they see these stats. Um, they genuinely believe that their emails, uh, you know, they're sending to, to their own database and they believe that their emails are being opened. Um, with a small caveat that not all opens are measured, but these are the, are the stats. So, um, you know, when you're looking at yours, um, see how it compares. Um, with the, the demo account that we're looking at before, we can see that um, their open percentage is higher than the average, um, but their clicks are down and their unsubscribes are up. What I would say about this account um, is that they've got really good subject lines. Um, they know how to get their emails opened. Um, but once they're opened, uh, their subscribers don't really know what to do. Maybe the, the content isn't for them, maybe they're not interested, um, or it could be simple as um, not including any call to actions. They have full articles in there. Um, there's no reason for anybody to click on anything. There's no reason for anybody to do anything. Um, so they may be reading it, but they're not clicking on anything. Um, and their unsubscribes could be up because they're just not interested in the email they're getting. Um, so they're unsubscribing. Um, what I would say for these, uh, this account to do was keep the, uh, the subject lines up and um, maybe to put a, a few more call to actions in their email, maybe pose some questions to their audience, um, maybe shorten their articles, just give them the first few sentences um, and then make them click to get more. Um, not only will you build up your clicks, your interaction with the emails, um, you'll find out what interests um, your subscribers. Um, so now you know what they are and you have a hard stick, a yardstick to, uh, to measure them against, um, how do you do better? Um, so here are a few points. Um, use the same from name and the same from email address every time. I mentioned this before about um, safe sender lists and not spam lists. Uh, if you keep changing the from email address each time you send, people aren't going to have the opportunity to add you to a safe list. Um, then you'll either end up in a junk mail folder, a spam folder, um, or your email just won't get opened. Um, the from name, um, it's, there's, a, there's a little back and forth on, on what you should do here. I think you should always include your company name um, as number one so people know who they're dealing with. Um, and depending on whether it's appropriate or not, uh, perhaps a, a business contact at the company who the, the contact knows, whether it's a sales manager or a marketing manager, anything you can do to jog your subscriber's memory um, to, to know about that relationship so they don't just spam your email, they open it. Uh, sending routine. Um, I spoke uh, about this uh, earlier on in the week. Uh, it's extremely important to have a routine and to stick to that routine. Um, our results show that those who are sporadic with their email sending, whether that be um, changing the day throughout the week or maybe doing it one month and not doing it another month, um, maybe they send it 10 p.m. on a Thursday night, um, 
uh, first week of the month, and then again maybe it's the the third month on a on a Wednesday morning. This tends to upset um, the, the general open rates and the success of their campaigns. Um, all of your ESPs should provide scheduling tools, so there's no reason why you can't get your email sorted early on in the week, early on in the month, schedule it to go out at the same time, the same day, um, each month. Um, it really works. Spam test. Um, Again, extremely important. You may be composing your uh, your content and it could be full of all different kinds of words or malformed code, unclosed tags. Um, maybe you've copied and pasted something from a website and just dumped it into your email. You don't know what's actually behind that. Um, run it through a spam test. Um, talk to your email service provider about that. They'll either have tools included or they'll be able to point you to some other tools. What it'll do is it'll scan through your email content. It'll give you a report at the end. Generally, these are the same reports that um, spam filters use in order to rate your emails. Um, so it'll flag things like uh, the keywords we spoke about or whether you've got some, some empty tags, some, some unclosed tags that are, that are causing problems. Um, some spam filters actually check for bad code as well. Um, and then you can fix that, do your testing, and know that you're doing everything you can to get your emails through. Um, engaging with subscribers, this one seems obvious, um, but it, it, it's often missed. Um, if you're sending out content that your subscribers don't want, um, don't expect great results. Um, like we said before, use the, the call to actions, include them, try and um, pose questions, ask your subscribers, ask your database about what sort of content they'd like to be receiving, um, offer competitions, and if you're doing newsletters, shorten your articles, include just a couple of teaser sentences um, to promote them to, to click. And whether that goes back to your website or to a social media page, um, the idea is getting that engagement. Um, It'll translate into traffic on your websites or your social media pages. Um, also, when you go through analytics later, you'll see, uh, you know, look, my, my database is interested in this particular topic because everybody was clicking it and no one was clicking on these two. So next month, um, we might include three of those articles on this topic and maybe we'll ditch those other two. Uh, again, goes back to the testing. Um, other mediums are you missing out? Um, so traditional marketing is not limited to one medium. You have TV, radio and print. Uh, the same can be said for digital marketing. Um, you want to expand your message onto SMS and social media, for example. Um, there isn't just one medium. Um, Facebook, everybody knows about it. Um, if you don't have a company Facebook page, you should. It should be a part of your digital marketing plan. Um, with this, you can share links, images, and content, which is great for the online view of your email campaign. Again, all ESPs have that now. Um, you can share the actual campaign. Um, it's likeable and shareable uh, amongst uh, the fans on your Facebook page. It's just another demographic that you don't really want to be missing out on. Email marketing can be the core because you own that database and that's yours, um, but it doesn't hurt to push the message out to others. Um, Twitter is exactly the same. It's a different crowd, short attention grabbing headlines, um, again with links to the online view. Twitter is great uh, for conversations. It's limited to 160 characters, uh, so you can have that back and forth engagement with your customers after the email's gone out. Uh, a lot of people just um, call it an email blast. You know, they send and forget. Um, we, we call them email campaigns, and you should engage with your customers. Um, Bit of a side topic here, um, I wouldn't recommend using the no reply at companyname.com.au. Um, you're basically telling the people who you want to market to or you want to have a relationship with, uh, a business relationship with, um, that you don't want to hear from them. You, you're, you're telling them, don't reply back to me because I'm going to ignore it. Um, it's, it's number, you know, big 101, put an info out, put an email out, put your own name out. Um, you want this engagement. This is the whole reason you're doing it. Um, SMS. Um, we saw the big graph at the beginning. Um, don't dismiss the power of SMS. It's, a, it's an older technology, um, but 
it's a, it's a technology that's available on all mobile phones, or pretty much all mobile phones, not just smartphones. Um, you're almost guaranteed delivery. Um, there aren't spam filters for SMS yet. Uh, I'm sure that'll probably come. Um, you're, you know, you're guaranteed to get your message through. Um, they're also delivered front and centre on the device. Um, you have emails in different email clients. Um, not everyone's going to see it. It's going to get filled up with other emails. Um, SMS goes, it beeps. It comes up on the front of the on, on front of the phone. Um, it's worth it. Uh, and again, they're timely and portable. Um, you could have a promotion, um, you know, at six o'clock on a Friday. Most people have gone home. Maybe they don't have their work emails on their phone. Uh, maybe they only check it at work. Uh, you want to get out, get your message out to them. Perhaps you've got a, a promotion that's only um, valid in the afternoon. Maybe some happy hours or, or something like that. Uh, you can get an SMS out there. It's going to buzz. People are going to know about it. Um, and the fact that it's portable also means that you could use it as a vouchering system. You could say, show this SMS for uh, buy one, get one free, or uh, some other offer. Um, people can't really fake uh, an SMS. You can't forward an SMS on and have it show that it's from the same company um, like you can do with email. So it's, it's quite an easy and cheap way of implementing a voucher system um, that gets delivered directly to the phone. Um, so that's it. I've cruised through it pretty quickly, um, but I don't know if anybody has any questions about either of the topics. So um, we have a pretty strict um, permission marketing policy across our company. Um, we have terms and conditions and we really promote everybody getting opt-in, double opt-in permission to, to market to their customers. Um, we random check lists, um, we have particular thresholds if, if email um, campaigns uh, are triggered for spam. The same goes with SMS. Uh, you're marketing to people who have opted in. Um, what we also do is by default include opt out as part of the SMS, so you can SMS stop to a particular number um, and then you're automatically removed from the system. So the same basic principles apply. Uh, we do globally, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Um, does anyone have any other questions? Um, do you see any trends? I mean, like I've noticed, I guess, the last 18 months, I used to use email a lot to seven years ago. For me, it never mind, but for the last 18 months, it's been very useful again. I don't know if that's just me, but I'm also finding that it's more effective to me. Um, for us, email has always been strong. Um, you know, there there are social media has, has come along, um, and there are certainly in the personal and the smaller business space, a lot of companies are opting to just use social media and not um, maintain an email database, push their promotions out like that. Um, that's fine, and we do push social media as well, um, but we're a part of a, you know, we, we promote a big, bigger digital marketing plan. So we, we, we think you should have your email as well as your social media. As far as trends go, um, the biggest upswing has been SMS, actually. Um, it, it's really booming again. Uh, there are lots of legislation that, that's come in both here and in the UK, I'm not too sure about the US, um, which cleaned up the industry a lot. Um, you know, it's now mandatory to include the opt-outs, it has to be functioning. Um, so a lot more people are trusting SMS again. Um, so it's, yeah, it, it's the big upswing. Uh, yeah? Uh, the client pays for the SMS. Um, so the business, yes. Yeah, so you pay for the SMS. Um, they are, well, they're significantly more expensive than email. Um, However, um, they are significantly more effective than email. Um, we have 
what our clients tend to have mixed databases. So they'll have a main list and that's their email list and they'll also have a smaller list which is their, their mobile list. Um, we don't really recommend blasting out your entire message via SMS to the 5,000 or 10,000 plus that you have. Um, it's going to be a really expensive campaign and you want to hope that it's going to pay off. Um, what we instead um, suggest is smaller lists um, perhaps of uh, valued customers, you can see that they engage with your emails. Um, that's how you can use those campaign results. You can see who's been clicking on campaigns. You can then take that full list and put it into another list and you can say, these are my valuable customers. I'm going to send them some SMS marketing. Um, that works the best. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, um, so it's, it's a constant, I'm not going to say battle because, you know, where we don't facilitate spam, we're not a part of that, um, and we try to, you know, we do everything we can to promote good quality email marketing. Um, what they're doing is, is good for the industry, um, you know, email has a bad reputation and I know people, a lot of their inboxes get full up with spam and, you know, we're a part of those initiatives. Um, we have all our feedback loops for Gmail and AOL. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, we're a part of those initiatives. We, we collate that data, we feed it back. Um, they're a part of our reporting. So when people send out those campaigns and people click that spam button in Gmail, um, we get that feedback. Uh, and if you go above a particular percentage in your campaign, uh, you're going to send off a flag at sign up and you're going to get a call or an email saying, where'd you get your data from? Um, well, to start off, what we have is a self-serve platform. We provide the software and the platform for clients to do their marketing. Um, moving on from that, though, we offer uh, managed services as well. So uh, we often do work on marketing plans. Um, <laughs> They're like websites, they're like app development. It's very specific to the client's requirements. Um, you know, we can offer advice that we've, we've, we've garnered over the years and working with very different clients. We can see what works and what doesn't work. Um, it, it, that's normally the, the route we go with that. Uh, yeah. Um, Sure. Um, so th the question was about um, sending routines. Yeah. And, and, and why does it matter, right? Um, it, it's, we, we believe pe people are creatures of habit. Um, people uh, learn to expect certain things at certain times and um, triggers to happen. And email tends to be one of those. Um, there is an argument um, to disrupt what people are doing and force your message on. Um, that sort of falls into that attention grabbing spam stuff. Um, routine works really well. If you've got a regular newsletter that you do every month, um, you send it on the last Thursday of each month, it comes through. Um, when people see it, 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 they don't have to spend that few seconds working out who it is or what it's from. They, they know, oh, this is the, the mailing list I signed up for to the, the, the bar. Um, you know, it, it can relate to um, fashion, uh, IT, uh, T-shirts, uh, bars. Um, it's just our, our experience with all our clients um, in multiple countries as well that routine works the best. SMS is different. You actually want to disrupt there. Um, and SMS is less predictive. Um, you can't 
really know where someone's going to be at a particular time. So if you were to send the same SMS all the time, um, you're sort of negating the reason why you're sending out on SMS. Um, it's normally to grab people at, a, at an off time. A SMS, um, it's sort of anything goes. Uh, you just want to be mindful that you're not sending an SMS in the middle of the night to somebody, because <laughs> um, that's going to upset them. Yes. Yes. Um, absolutely. Uh, we have marketing automation um, built in to sign up, and it, it's just something that later this month's going to be improved on as well. Um, so it has things uh, like customers' birthdays, date of birth, when you record that, you can automatically set up emails that go out. Um, you can also have uh, particular triggers um, when people click on particular links, it can fire off a set of emails. Um, this can work with dynamic content, which we have as well. So you can write your emails in a particular way with um, if then else statements um, based on criteria of the subscribers that you have. You want to build, you know, want to capture as much information about your subscribers, not just their first names and their email addresses, but you know their postcodes, their date of births. Um, you can add custom fields about their purchase history in your company. Um, you can enter all that in and then set up dynamic content. Um, one email goes out. It's split. It shows male, male versions and female versions. That one email can go out, and depending on you know the gender set for each of the subscribers, they see different emails. That's a big trend um, that we'd like to see. It, it's not really happening yet. The tools have been out for a while. Um, I guess it's more of an education. Some of those those clients who are trying to push the envelope a little more and get more out of their email marketing, they take advantage of it. Sure. Um, when you mention triggers then, uh, would I be able to have multiple triggers around the site that say perhaps in combination of using and then have the if then else statements within the mail template or not if I'm thinking like I could have um yeah, tailored messages, messages in that respect to someone writes on the site and might say, I'll pop your email address to watch the product video, they watch the that video and they choose to read a certain white paper. I now know they've seen this video, read this white paper. <coughs> then there might be a download software trial. Yeah, yeah. Like the Bell, you know, maybe what the city or well, we know the geographic, but some other question. And then two days later, they get an email message with your future release. Um, and would I be able to have something to tell us specifically then? Um, the short answer is more than likely. Um, but chat to me afterwards. Um, yeah, you, we, a combination of dynamic content, um, marketing automation triggers, and um, scheduled email um, series would achieve all of that. Yeah. Um, I think that's it. But if anybody wants to come and talk to me afterwards, um, I'm going to be at the Fox um, till the end. Thank you very much.